Hello and welcome back and in today's video I'm going to be picking uh, this padlock which is a girder. I'm not sure of the exact model. As you can see this is a disc detainer uh, core and I'm going to be picking it with the RWP Gen 3 pick which is a recent addition for me. Now eagle-eyed viewers uh, would uh, perhaps remember a video I did, but you probably don't, uh, years ago where I picked a disc detainer lock on this channel. is actually with this uh, homebrew pick, uh, which I made to a Daz Evers recipe. If you want to see that video, I'll leave a link up there. It is excellent, um, but I didn't get on too well with this particular pick. Uh, or disc detainer picking and I said that would be the only video you would see on this channel of me picking a disc detainer lock but obviously that isn't the case because I've got this uh, beautiful pick here from RWB Customs uh, which I've been playing with recently. Um, the reason I said it was going to be the only uh, disc detainer lock that I uh, pick on the channel is because I didn't really get on with disc detainer picking in general. Now when you're picking a disc detainer You've got a tensioning uh, piece there, and then you've got this piece here, which is actually rotates your picking tip, as you can see there, as you sort of pick through the lock and uh, rotate those discs. Uh, because what I was finding is that it gave me a lot of wrist trouble. I've got a nasty scar on my wrist there. You can just see it's quite long. It's about six inches long. I didn't try and kill myself. Um, I was actually jumping on my mountain bike, and I had a bad crash, and I obliterated my wrist. It was terrible. Um, but that left me with just a few uh, ongoing problems with my hand and my fingers. And the twisting motion of disc detainer picking um, meant that it was, it, it just gave me a lot of pain. And I decided well, it's not for me. I'll just, I'll just stick with pin tumbler picking. Uh, but then I, I love seeing this pick on um, RWB's uh, Instagram and it's absolutely beautiful. It's well machined. And I was just really keen to have a play with it. Um, but what I decided was that um, you'd normally hold a disc detainer pick like this if you're right-handed. So you tension with your left hand and you pick with your right hand. But I thought, well, what if I, you know, tried doing it the other way around? I'm not ambidextrous, but I do use my uh, left hand for a lot of things. Um, I can use both hands for a lot of things, not all things. Um, but I thought, let's give it a go. Um, and yeah, so what I've been doing is teaching myself uh, to pick disc detainer locks with this pick, but using my left hand for picking and my right hand uh, for tensioning. So anyway, uh, waffle over. I'll get this set up in the vise so you've got a reasonably good view, and we'll see if we can't get him picked today. So I've got him set up in the vise there. I've got a key that hopefully, yeah that works uh, works well. I think on this one, we have got eight discs. So we've got a zero on the front. So we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight discs. Um, and there's one zero cut, oh, sorry, two zero cut is the first one and the third one. Um, so first up, let's just rotate all the discs clockwise and then uh, insert the pick. Now you've got uh, two sets of dots on this pick. You've got these ones here which are close together, these ones here which are further apart as far as I understand it. Um, these ones that are further apart uh, are suitable spacing for most distatainer picks, uh, or it's more common anyway. <clears throat> Just get the pick in, give it a bit of tension, and yeah, see if we can't get it picked. So first I'm gonna slide all the way down to the back. Uh, turn it just a fraction, come back on myself, and that tells me that that is the first disc. So I'll rotate it back, get in the gap, and see about rotating him. Got a little click out of that one. A couple of clicks out of the second one. I don't think there's false gates in this. You can't open it up to sort of find out. Uh, definitely over rotated that one. Let's come back on myself. It's a little bit snaggy that one. Let's try again. It's a tiny little click. Let's leave him there for now. Little click out of that one as well. Nothing on that one. Nothing on that one. Nothing. 
nothing on that one. Let's go back to the back. I bought this padlock on a recommendation uh, from Crispix. If you're not familiar with his channel, I'll leave a link up in the top right there. Uh, it picks lots of disc detainer locks. A little bit of a turn there. Um, it picks lots of disc detainer locks, and he actually recommended this padlock as a good uh, beginner's lock. So I bought it off of eBay on the strength of that recommendation. Uh, and yeah, it certainly didn't disappoint. That one is binding, but... Leave him there for a minute. That one. I think that might be. No, that's not the zero cut, is it? Oh, it could have been the zero cut. I think I'm on the first one now. Yeah, I think that one is the second one, by my count. And I'm pretty sure, yeah, it feels like a zero cut, so hopefully, there we go. That was the first one, and we got this one open. So yeah, lots of fun to pick that one. No false gates or anything uh, too tough in there. Um, you're able to tension off the first disc, so that makes it... Uh, yeah, really good. Beginner's, um, excuse me, a beginner's padlock uh, as well. Um, certainly one of the first that I've opened on this uh, disc, uh, disc detainer picking journey. Uh, it's been quite fun learning to pick uh, with this. It does feel like going back to the beginning in a sense because you've got to build up that muscle memory. And certainly for myself, because I'm doing it left-handed, uh, it took a bit of getting used to. I think the first couple of weeks were a bit frustrating. Um, but again, uh, beginner-friendly locks like this really does help. Uh, anyway, thanks for picking with me today. And uh, I'll leave a little link up there to subscribe. That's always appreciated. And I will see you on the next one.